Hi, Dave Lee here. Thanks for joining us for this episode of FLIR Delta. Today we're going to take a look at some important basic information public safety operators need to know in order to get the best results from their thermal imager. When we talk about public safety, that's an umbrella term for a wide range of applications like firefighting, search and rescue, law enforcement, and many more. While the foundational physics that make your camera work aren't any different for public safety operators and industrial thermographers, there are a few important differences in how the cameras are used that influence what impact the environment will have on camera performance. First is the overall goal. Public safety operators, especially search and rescue and law enforcement, are typically trying to find a small target within a large area. Thermographers, on the other hand, are inspecting a known area or structure that can be much smaller than what public safety operators deal with. Also, public safety operators often need to make real-time decisions based on the imagery they're seeing in the moment, as opposed to industrial inspectors who are capturing data they'll review later. These two factors make a real difference in how you approach your imaging. And one of the biggest factors you need to consider is how to anticipate and account for environmental factors when flying public safety missions. What does the environment have to do with it? Well, there are lots of differences between how thermal cameras and video cameras make an image, but one thing they have in common is that if you try to use them in the wrong conditions, they're not going to give you the results you want. Look at it this way. This video is being shot with some pretty expensive, high-quality cameras. But if we turn the lights out, you're not going to see much. And if the lighting is good, they make great pictures. If not, not so much. With thermal cameras, we're concerned with heat, not light, but the same concept applies. The amount of thermal energy in a scene and where it is can spell the difference between mission success and failure. And key to that is understanding how the environment impacts what you are seeing. There are three interrelated environmental factors you need to be aware of. The diurnal cycle, solar loading, and a phenomenon known as thermal crossover. The diurnal cycle is just a fancy name for something we all see happen every day. The sun comes up and the sun goes down. The longer the sun is up and the clearer the sky, the more radiation is absorbed by things on the ground. When the sun goes down, that stored radiation is given back off to the atmosphere. The catch is that the more solar radiation is absorbed, the harder it can be to make out things on the ground. This is the second factor I mentioned, and it's called solar loading. As the scene you're looking at absorbs more and more radiation, the temperature differences between your object of interest and its surroundings get smaller and smaller. That's what solar loading can do. When a scene is solar loaded, it can be very hard, if not downright impossible, to tell one thing from another in a scene. So solar loading is the absorption of the sun's thermal energy by the objects you're trying to image. The more solar loading in a scene, the harder it is to tell one thing from another. Thermal crossover happens when the apparent temperature differences between your object of interest and its immediate surroundings is reduced to the point where the camera can't discern between the two. It's called thermal crossover because in extreme cases, what would typically look warm against a cool background can actually be reversed and look cool against a warmer background. You're probably thinking that this is pretty obvious. Thermal cameras see heat, and if it's hot, you can't see anything. The catch is that heat energy and temperature are not the same thing. So how the ambient temperature feels to you isn't a good indicator of how things are going to look in thermal. That's a good place to stop for now. Thanks for watching this episode of FLIR Delta. Check out our other episodes at fleer.com slash delta. Fly safe, and I'll see you next time.